got a call one day from Jimmy Benz when MMA in Philadelphia, all of PA, was not legalized. And I said, hey, let's do this MMA thing or let's get ready for this MMA thing. And we started talking. And Jim and his family came from the boxing world. We came from the jiu-jitsu mixed martial arts world. It made sense to do something to showcase the people in Philadelphia. Uh, well, my son and I have had a lot of experience in promotions uh, stemming from the time that uh, I was the boxing commissioner of Pennsylvania beginning in 1980. And uh, shortly after becoming the boxing commissioner, in addition, I became the only lawyer in the world for the World Boxing Association, which is headquartered in uh, South America. And so we became exposed uh, jointly to a lot of promoters, uh, including Don King, Bob Arum, Lou DiBella, Cedric Krishner, uh, Bob Goodman, Madison Square Garden, main events. Uh, I don't want to leave anybody out, but if I went on to uh, include the entire list of European and Latin American and uh, North American promoters, it would uh, take quite a bit of time. So in any event, uh, when my son got involved in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with uh, my nephews, Ricardo and uh, Phil Migliarese. Uh, the three of us, along with uh, Big Phil, uh, the father of Phil and Ricky, uh, sat down and discussed the possibility of utilizing uh, our talents uh, that we had acquired over the 25 to 30 years that uh, we were involved in professional boxing uh, and lend them to the world of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and mixed martial arts. I think the main reason why I wanted to create Matrix Fights was that I saw a void in how the promoters were actually trying to do business with some of the fighters. And being that it was such a brand new sport, it needed some type of structure of, uh, you know, good, good promotion with good intent for fighters to have them fight locally and then hopefully take them on to the next you know national worldwide level we all came up with uh, the matrix idea uh, as a name and we started cooking on the on the uh, on the first one so it was a good event for the first one the first event that we did actually <laughs> it was probably the most packed that we ever had because it was our first event and we did it at the uh, the local Alhambra, it was called the Alhambra at the time. And man, I, there's probably like maybe 2,000, 2,500 um, uh, spectators, which was way over what we expected. Just a great show, great people. You know, the uh, the ambience was nice. There wasn't uh, booing or anything. It was just a nice atmosphere altogether. It's what it's kind of what we wanted. We wanna we wanna stray away from the normal MMA fan, the normal everyday uh, that pretty much doesn't don't know what they're looking at. But uh, we wanted a more classy uh, classy event, which we got. We have it for all eight shows. We had it for. Matrix 1 uh, was an unbelievable show. Um, it, was, it was packed, there wasn't a seat, there wasn't an open seat in the house. It was great energy. It was, uh, felt like a lot of um, old school Philadelphia fighting. Uh, Philadelphia is, has a lar long, long history of uh, fighting, starting from years and years ago. And you know, we, we want to continue to bring that to Philadelphia with MMA and Matrix One was uh, probably one of our best shows that we've ever done. Well, Matrix Fights One was a huge event, a couple thousand people, all great fights. We were all excited and we couldn't wait to do Matrix Two. And we used the same formula. We got great fight fighters from the area and uh, it worked out again. So we promote it. Luckily, we have a pretty good uh, web presence and uh, it was easy to sell tickets because of all the really great fights from the area. After the first promotion, uh, it seemed to me that we entered the field in a rather seamless 
transition and uh, it became immediately apparent to all of the people involved, that is the three Migliorises and Jimmy and I, that uh, this was something that we could do uh, simply because of our innate talents. Uh, <clears throat> the Miglieris brothers, uh, from the standpoint of their being able to train fighters and uh, being able to utilize their reputation as skilled black belts in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, their father is a, uh, very acute a business person and then uh, Jimmy and I brought in the other angle of it and that was from the angle of uh, boxing uh, uh, at a professional level so it uh, immediately appeared to me that we had something that was working here and had the ability to be taken higher higher and higher. There was a couple fights that were that, that were just unbelievable energy like when Sammy O fought Ogla Sang Julio Rosario fought Breland, Van Arslan. There was Marines versus Army. There was crazy energy in the building for that. Favorite knockout, I mean, it's the worst knockout that we've had in our show. Uh, it was Anthony Morrison and, what is it, Nick Gonzalez, uh, Gonzalez, I believe. And the one kid was going for a reverse spin punch and cheesesteak. Anthony Morrison came up and hit him with the right hand, I believe, and knocked the poor guy out. Two great fighters, and you know, the fight was at some points very, very even, and you know, that's what happens in MMA. It was a really exciting knockout. And we've had a lot of guys that are in Bellator and UFC now that put on great performances to actually get in the UFC or Bellator, and they actually started their, you know, either their first, second, third fight in Matrix. I have to say, <laughs> my favorite fight, and I think it was my brother's too, because he was sitting right next to me, was the uh, was a woman's fight. I think it was, uh, man, I forget their names now. Muna. Yeah, Muna Holland and um, and the Brazilian girl, and that ended in a knockout, which is my was my favorite knockout. I mean, they just came out to bang, and they're a lot more strategic than I thought, like than the guys were that night. And uh, they came out. The first round was just excitement from when the bell rang to the end of the end of the round. I think it ended in the second round, I believe, because they came they came back out and it was just ended right in the knockout. We were right there. I was actually right there when she hit the girl. Boom! It was right there. I think it was me, my father, <laughs> and my brother. We all made the same noise uh, as soon as she made the connection with that with that fist. When they signed a fight for Matrix, the thing that's come back to us is that they are uh, really impressed with the professional manner in which they're treated because we're used to dealing at a professional level and uh, when we uh, sign them and when we pay them and when we explain to them all of the things that go into the promotion and how they're going to benefit from it, uh, their eyes are opened and they are very appreciative. Well, what's cool about Matrix is that really no matter what ticket you get, you're gonna see the show very, very close and very, it's a very intimate sort of uh, fight. We tried to model the fight after old boxing. The, even the layout of the ring and the layout of the VIP and the front rows and all that sort of stuff and the interaction with our staff. 
uh, what I want out of the Matrix experience. I want whoever comes to buy a ticket, I want them, one, to have a comfortable experience. All right, we don't we don't pack in the chairs too uh, too deep. We we don't put too many. You know, we put a limited amount of space in there because I want everybody to be comfortable. On top of that, we don't uh, mix match fights. In other words, I'm not putting a guy together, or we won't agree upon putting a guy that's like 10 fights fighting a guy one fight. So it's not going to be like quick knockouts. They're going to be great fights. They're going to be close, and you're not going to know who's going to win. Uh, and the ambience itself. I mean, I don't want. Um, you know, only knuckleheads in there, so I don't want anybody causing trouble. So when you walk into one of our events, you can bring your children, you can bring your kids, and you can have a great time there. Plans for a future Matrix are to keep putting on consistent quality shows and to eventually in time when uh, we make the right relationship with a corporate, uh, with, a, with a TV company or media company that we can actually get a bigger audience, we, we're ready to take the step. I mean, essentially what we're doing now, everyone that we have fighting is like stick figures. If we had a bigger production and we had a bigger uh, 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 budget, I would go after bigger stars and we'd be doing the same exact type of type of show, but in a bigger uh, setting. So it's almost like we're coming up with the right formula and we're perfecting our formula each show that we do. And as, as any business, it has its bumps in, along the way, and that's where you work out the kinks. And But the, the, the biggest thing that we have is a strong core. and. That it, it, it gets stronger as the sport gets bigger because our core is always the same. We live by a lot of the, a lot of good values to each other, um, and we we instill those values to whoever we work with. And you know that's we're gonna let it create itself naturally and not have to do a lot of the things that other people do in this business to cut corners because they don't do business correctly. But. We think that we're uh, confident enough in, in, in our beliefs and the way that we do business that we will be the, the ones standing with the best product and ready to go to the next level. And I think that we're, uh, we're very close to that next level. We purposely kept the show small so it wouldn't be too much stress on our staff to know that we can do a show literally every month, a really great show, at least you know, even twice a month we can do it with the people that we have working with us. So what I'm looking forward to in the future is to keep developing this talent. I mean, we have a lot of talent in Philadelphia, and I'd like to pull people in worldwide as we've done in the past, but more often. So I'd like to see these guys from Brazil, from Europe, come over and fight a little bit more. Well, the plans for the future, our plans for the future are to continue with the natural progression that we have experienced uh, until we reach a uh, national slash international level. Uh, because we know how to do it, uh, we are respected in the industry. Uh, you won't find any uh, state commissioner who will find fault with any of the uh, promotions that we have accomplished thus far. Uh, they know how to work with us, we know how to work with them, we know what's expected of us, and we always deliver. We're going to take it as far as we can take it. I mean, we have some discussion uh, taking it out of the country as well. We're talking to some people as of right now. Um, we're we're hesitant. We're putting it on. We had plenty of chances to put it on TV. We wanted to actually do at least uh, ten shows and prove ourselves that to ourselves and to the people who are watching it that we could put on really good fights and we could do this before we even uh, venture into that. But we're also getting close to that as well. Uh, between Jimmy Bins, myself, and, and the other partnership that we have, we have a lot of great connections which uh, with obviously in this uh, sport, connections will lead fighters into you know, bigger fights. I mean, if you look at an hour track record on people who fight in our show, we have uh, half a dozen, if not a dozen, people that make it onto our show that go onto bigger shows like Bellator, 
uh, UFC, you know, so forth. So it's not only good for, you know, the viewers, but this is also good for the fighter, whoever fights in our tournament. We, in the, even in the crowd alone, we have such high respect of people in there and people who want to sponsor these fighters. I invite a, a lot of, um, a lot of business owners, a lot of, uh, I mean, that's the crowd that we have, a lot of business owners, a lot of um, people with, you know, big money that don't know where to put their money and they're interested in this sport. You know, this is a very new sport and everybody wants to get their hands in it. This is good for one, to get sponsorships for the fighters and two, it can be a way for the, the sponsor to make money, you know, and be involved somehow.